Hello everyone, this is Suzanne at the Gospel Truth. Welcome back. We are reading out of the Master Potter series by Jill Austin. This is the book. And Master Potter and the Mountain of Fire is going to be the next continuation. Yesterday, when we left off, Madam and the mayor, I believe, or no, pastor compromised. They were trying to get her to come back, telling her, oh, it was just a mistake. It was a misunderstanding. We love you. We want you back. I've got so many things to teach you. All lies. And she did not take the bait. We must never take the bait. Nana Kathleen, thank you for your comments. It is an exciting book, isn't it? And Joanne, I know you're enjoying it as well. I don't know how many others are exactly following it, but we're sure having a good time, aren't we? All right, let's get right into our story. The Father's Vineyard. The country road slowly narrows as Master Potter and Beloved enter the ancient vineyards carved in the gentle slopes of the mountain. Gray fieldstone walls separate the terrace plots of gnarled grapevines supporting clusters of dusty purple grapes. Approaching a beautiful wrought iron gate of delicate grape and leaf design, they enter the courtyard leading to enormous ivy covered stone buildings of an ancient winery. Over the entryway is an ornate wooden plaque embossed in gold lettering, the father's vineyard. In a swarm of activity, workers load heavy wooden casks of wine to be taken to Comfort Cove. Each horse-drawn wagon is quickly loaded and dispatched while another takes its place waiting to be filled. The wine is headed for the docks to be loaded on my ship, which will depart tonight. The captain, the captain of my ship depend on the Rock of Salvation lighthouse to help navigate the treacherous straits of the dragon. This ship will bring the wine of healing and refreshing to the Bay of the Martyrs. New Wine of the Holy Spirit. They stroll under a vine-covered arbor, which opens into a hidden stone courtyard in the back. Beloved gasps as she sees radiant angels. One of the wine casks is open, and a multitude of angels led by Valiant are celebrating. They're enjoying the new wine of the Holy Spirit, beloved. He's a good friend of mine whom you will meet later. Laughing, Master Potter takes a beautiful goblet from Valiant. Do you know why they are so joyous? Beloved, too stunned to speak, can only nod her head as she stares in amazement. Valiant offers a toast as the angels rise, raise their glasses. Master Potter's death on the cross has redeemed another broken vessel. Today we celebrate Beloved's entrance into new life. Rousing, joyful shouts of glee exalt Master Potter's great love and sacrifice. Valiant raises his glass again and proclaims to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that Beloved may come forth. Your Grandma Pearl prayed for you every day and wouldn't give my father any rest until she knew you were safe. She and all of heaven rejoiced when I rescued you from the potter's field, and I wanted to show you just a glimpse of the elation over your entrance into my kingdom. Sam's, <coughs> excuse me, Sam's in here <coughs> playing a little bit. When I turn my back, he tends to get in trouble, so... Excuse me. Beloved is astounded by what she has just seen. Still dazed, she looks at the Master Potter. Your kingdom is bigger than what I can see, isn't it? Master Potter tips his head back and forth and laughs in delight. You have no idea, Beloved. You have no idea. Soon they leave the vineyards behind, and the landscape changes from wildflowers into fragrant eucalyptus and oak trees. She snuggles deeper into the folds of his robes, resting and secure in his strong arms. There's no better place to be than in the arms of Jesus. And God will give us that comfort when we rise up again to become Christians. We are his now. We are his precious child and he will fight to keep us. 
Vessels of Destiny. Hours pass. The noonday sun begins its downward journey and the dense woods give way to a wide clearing. Walking toward a high bluff overlooking Comfort Cove, Master Potter excitedly sends in a deep reson resonating voice. Beloved, it won't be long before we rest for the night, but first let me share this with you. Although Beloved had grown up near the sea, it seems her eyes were opened in a brand new way to the beauty around her. Everything she sees is clearer, brighter, and lovelier than she can ever remember. The panoramic view takes her breath away. Have you ever seen something, and then maybe many years gone back, and looked around, you see it through a new pair of eyes. Things come to life. The overshadowing of our sin is gone and we can see more clearly now. Like, how did I miss this before? The ocean's dancing blue water glitters like diamonds in the brilliant sunlight. The salty breeze blows gently through her hair invigorating her senses as she gazes on the azure blue accents of the horizon. Beloved eyes follow tangles of wild roses trailing down and disappearing over the rocky outcropping. As they move closer to the edge, the busy fishing harbor comes into view. A demon of fear blows several small poisonous darts that explode as they pierce Beloved, embedding deeply within her heart. Suddenly, hurtful images from the past flood her mind, terrorizing her. The thought of falling back into her own ways caused her to tremble. I don't want to ever go back there. You will someday, but you're not ready. I don't know if I'll ever be ready. Master Potter touches her heart with his hand, and soothing heat melts the darts, vanishing fear. His peace and love once again restore her heart. When it's time to go, beloved, I'll go with you. You won't be alone, and you will go back not as a victim, but as my warrior bride. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God will prepare us for the battle that's ahead. The flagship of the bridegroom king. Master Potter points at the blue vista of sea and sky to ancient seafaring vessel destined for Comfort Cove. White billowing sails mounted on tall wooden masts enable the ship to cut through the water in unparalleled mag magnificence. He's being good. Okay. Even from this lofty view, the sound of angelic trumpets proclaiming its entrance into the harbor can clearly be heard. Beloved watches fiery messengers on horseback ride through the village announcing the flagship's arrival. It is the flagship of the bru bridegroom king. Brilliant flags of scarlet, blue, and purple ripple gracefully in the wind, displaying the king's royal colors in full governmental splendor. The sleepy village begins buzzing with excitement and activity as people hurry to unload cargo from the majestic vessel. From, fa from this far distance, beloved can still make out familiar, weather-beaten faces of the village fishermen hauling in their day's catch. Dock workers who clean and salt the fish shout joyously to each other. Working quickly, they toss the fish in wooden barrels to load it onto the great ship. Others mend torn nets and Beloved imagines that they are discussing their own exciting plans for the celebration that will take place that night. It's not every day that a ship such as this one comes in Comfort Cove's humble village harbor. Memories of the Past Looking down from the bluff, she sees Antagonist coming out of the tavern heading for the dock. He's wearing his rubber fishing boots with his crumpled and dirty work pants tucked inside. His limp is unmistakable. Another fiery dart from a nearby demon wounds Beloved. Her heart is suddenly saddened by the memory of the first time she saw her former boyfriend. He had come crashing through the tavern window on the losing end of a barroom brawl. Excuse me. No. Just like a kid. Sam. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Daddy's called him into another room. He was behind me chomping on the rocking chair. Did 
this nibbling. He knows when my back is turned. He d he knows. Oh my goodness. All right. This is life, right? Life steps in sometimes. We have little disruptions, but we're okay. The relationship has started badly. He could merely provide a place for her to stay, and she could provide what he wanted, too. It had ended worse. She had lost count of the number of times she had vowed to leave him after his beatings. But his sad blue eyes, sincere-sounding apologies, and her fear of living on the docks alone kept her in the cramp cramped, fish-scented apartment over the barber shop. He was so strong, but what could have been used to protect her was frequently vented against her. He's exactly like my father, an angry, abusive drunk. She wonders why there were times she felt so strangely drawn to him. She had to admit she was attracted to his lean, muscular fr frame and tanned face, the result of years of working on the docks. Even the jagged scar across his right cheek, which he got from the broken window, was somehow intriguing. As she absently stares at antagonist, Master Potter, aware of her every thought, says, I'm going to heal your heart of these painful memories. I'm not going to leave you wounded. I'll be your beloved. You will no longer look to men for what they can, can't provide. I will give you back the dignity that was taken from you and the dignity you willingly gave away. She blushes in shame and looks at the ground. Taking her face in his hands, he gently turns it back and replies, You're on a journey and right now you're broken. But watch what I'll do. I'll make you a beautiful vessel of honor. Now, I can relate to this a lot. Um, where it says, I'll give you back the dignity that was taken from you and the dignity you willingly gave away. As I've told you many times, I was sexually abused as a child. Probably from four years old up to 13. And the course that, that set me on over the next few years was not good at all so I can really relate to this but the master potter is telling her I'm your beloved now I will never hurt you I will never forsake you it's going to be good vessels of honor wooden, way, wooden wagons lumbering down the cobblestone streets create a great racket the wagons are laden with grains vegetables, fruits, and barrels of wine headed for the flagship. Look over look over there, beloved. My pottery wagons have just arrived from the for, formidable mountains, says Master Potter. Amidst the throng of villagers unloading the pottery, beloved rubs her eyes, squints, and rubs them again to be sure she is seeing correctly. She sees flashes of brilliant light. Watching in fascination, beloved turns questioningly to my, Master Potter. He smiles. Those flashes are my angels in disguise. They playfully streak through the air of time, flying on the wings of the wind. They're everywhere, all the time, even though you usually don't see them. Burly workers unpack the wagon, pulling out majestic pots of every conceivable size and shape from the pack straw. Stunning glazes of golden yellows, crimson reds, sapphire blues, and emerald greens Burnt oranges, bronze, silver, and gold shimmer in the late afternoon sun. Looking down at her own broken, ugly vessel, Beloved's face, face flushes, and she feels she will never be transformed into such beauty that is fit for the master's use. So here she's seeing all these vessels of honor. They have been transformed. And she is thinking, wow. I don't think I'll ever be transformed into that kind of beauty. Reassuring words. Seeing her face drop, Master Potter instantly understands her fears and reaches out to comfort her. These beautiful pots were also rescued out of the potter's field. They were as broken as you are, beloved. This is an exciting day of commissioning for them. They are further along on their journey that you're just beginning. As I did with these, I am taking you to my house to mold and shape your life into a beautiful reflection of my love. Mold me and make me after your will. 
God is the master potter. Beloved moans, but Lord, look at me. How could you ever fix me? With deep affection, he replies, I am Master Potter, the creator of all things. I've already seen you as one of those finished vessels that will be sent to the nations. I'm showing you this so you can have faith in your own completion. Remember this day and know that you have a wonderful destiny that, hidden, that is hidden in me. Still held in the Master Potter's strong arms, Beloved has a perfect bird's eye view from the high bluff overlooking the village. The thought of being a finished, lovely vessel makes her laugh with delight. She loves Master Potter even more. Master Potter turns and carries her to the peaceful and lovely woods, away from the noisy, loaden docks of Comfort Cove. The excitement of the day slowly fades into the background as they climb together. The mountainous terrain gradually changes into stately cedar trees pointing upward to the face of God. All right, we're going to stop right there for today. Tomorrow, um, it will be the potter's house. So he's taking her to his house. He's going to start shaping and molding her into what she needs to be. And isn't that how it is on our journey with the Lord? We come to him broken and in pieces. And he picks up all those pieces. And he carries us in his bosom. He says, I'm going to make you whole again. I'm going to make you a warrior bride. Oh, I remember when I was first baptized, it just seemed like the weight of the world was off my shoulders. I had new purpose, a new destination, a new life in Christ. Doesn't get much better than that. It doesn't get much better than that. Say it with me. It doesn't get much better than that. All right. Ah, oh, such a great writer. She puts these word pictures in our minds, and we can see that picture, and it comforts us, and it just keeps inspiring us to become better each day in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. I am loving these books. Yes, I am. This is great. All right. I'm going to set that aside. Oh, I um, wasn't feeling good yesterday. I got constipated. And, you know, when you get that way and your stomach exploded and you just don't feel good. Well, I took some milk of magnesia and some Miralax. And about 6 o'clock this morning, things started moving. And my stomach has just been sore. I've been drinking lots of water. Just feeling kind of, my, my knees are bothering me. Just that nauseous feeling. And it's like, whoa, I'll be glad when this passes. And then, I was sitting on the couch last night, right? And... I felt something like, ow, on my leg, my upper thigh that hurt. And I looked down, and here's this huge area about that big, purple, black and blue, bright colors. And I'm going, okay, what's that? <laughs> you know, one more thing, right? But I remembered hitting my leg on the corner of our new dresser. We're learning we have to cut a little bit wider berth to go around it. Our other dresser, we could cut it shorter. Well, Ron and I both have got clipped by it a couple times. I remember doing it and thinking, that's going to leave a mark. And then I just kind of forgot about it. But last night, it reminded me like, hey, we're hurting down here. I said, well, join the rest of my body. What's new? <laughs> Sometimes, we, you know, we have to laugh at that stuff. It's just so pitiful. <laughs> it's like, okay. But you know what? I'm working through it. And I hope you work through those times too. That you laugh at yourself and you just say, Satan, you know, I'm not even going to say bring it on anymore because it doesn't matter because Jesus is going to comfort me. He's going to give me the strength to get through the days. And I have a wonderful husband. He's suffering from migraines. He's suffering from dizzy spells. He'll go to get up and woo, the whole room swirls. He has to sit back down. He has his mic. It's just not a good situation. And then I wake up in the morning and I'm going, oh. <laughs> So, but he is so faithful, taking the dog out and helping me in spite of what he's going through. And I try to do bad for him. I made his coffee this morning, gathered up all the garbage. And we really help each other in that way. And that's the way it should be. We really complement each other. 
and we just celebrated on October 20th. Um, we had our uh, 12th anniversary, and uh, we asked the Lord when we got married if he'd give us 15 years, and we're asking him for, you know, okay, Lord, we're not quite at our 15 yet, but can we add, like, another 10 years onto that? And, uh, you know, whatever time the Lord gives us together, I'm going to cherish and honor it. And we all want more of a good thing, don't we? We don't want that good thing to ever end. Like, I want more, I want more, I want more. But if you want to keep keep yourself wanting more when you're a, a Christian, I want more of Jesus. I want more of Jesus. I want more of Jesus. I want more instruction. I want more knowledge. I want more wisdom. I want more understanding. I want to go, grow, and glow for Jesus every day of my life. In spite of what may be going on around me or in my body, I want to stand firm in the Lord and know that this all too shall pass one day. And I am running for the prize. And I know you are too. All right. I uh, worked a little bit more on my little... I'm trying to do a few rows every day. And as I showed you before, this is Stitch. And this is going to be his little blankie that's going to go on him. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer to make. Fit. I need to take it out to the living room so that when we're watching TV at night, I can just do it. I don't have to think about it. It's a very easy pattern. But um, it's great to be doing my crafts again. I'm sorry, my allergies are kicking up today. Um... Sam, I noticed, was scratching a little bit more today. I think he took his last allergy pill. We're trying to not get another bunch of them. They say it's the first freeze, and then it we shouldn't have to keep giving that to him. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch him over the next week. And if he's still starting back in his old habit of, of really biting his paws and doing all that, I think I might have to get a few more pills to see him through. But he's a stinker. Sometimes when I come on, he'll come back here. Some, most of the time, he'll lay quietly behind me and just be a good boy. But then like today, um, he's gnawing a little bit on that chair. He knows that's a no-no. And when I tap him a little bit on his little snout, he'll look at me like, what? What? I'm not, what? <laughs> he knows he's in trouble. But um, he's such a delight to us. We are so glad that we got him. Um he, he just is full of life, full of love for us. And it's always great to be loved, isn't it? All right, well, I've taken up enough of your time today. Thank you for stopping by again. And uh, Lord willing, I'll be back on tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a little bit of a busy day. Our uh, We have a adjustable bed. And it has a vibrating um, unit on it. And... When you press it, you can have it do your upper back or lower body. Sometimes I put it on because it, it helps my knees. It helps me. I concentrate on that. It takes my mind off the pain. And it does help. Well, for some reason, when we turn it off, it thinks it still should keep going. And it's, it's, it's a lower intensity, but it's, it's not good. So tomorrow between 10, no, 11 and 2 o'clock, they're going to come here. There'll be no charge because it's under warranty, and they're going to fix that. And then my grandson, Adam, he's coming by tomorrow. He just bought a new Bronco. He is so over-the-top excited, and it's so beautiful. It's kind of a reddish color, all the bells and whistles. It's his first really brand-new vehicle that he bought for himself, and he's all excited. So I said, why don't you come over Friday and uh, eat dinner with us? We'll go out for a ride in your new vehicle, and uh, we'll watch a movie together. And he said, oh, Grandma, that sounds so cool. And it's so great to have my grandchildren love me so much. And they still want to be active in our lives. And Adam, you know, always been here if I need anything. Carries in my groceries. He brings in my water. Um, if, if, if I need anything, Ron or I, he's, no problem, Grandma. No problem. He's such a delight. And he is a Christian. And um, so I'm so excited about tomorrow night. So I'm going to try to get on here after Gardner White leaves. I might do it before because Ron can handle that. And because uh, I don't want to miss, you know, 
a day in our story because it, it's we can see so much of ourselves in the story. And I think that's why it's so attractive because we can we can relate to it. And I think that's what the author intended for us to be for it to be highly relatable to us. And it's it's good. It's all good. <laughs> all right, I'm really going this time. Bye-bye.